if you are anything like me and you want to get into birds, but you don't really know where to start, you could get bombarded by all of the different songs and calls and alarm calls and flight calls and other sorts of sounds and tinks and bells and whistles that birds might be making, vocalizing with either different individuals of the same species or alarming other species such as predators, trying to get to know the world around them and other things like that. Some tools that you could potentially use are known as mnemonics or mnemonic devices, and that does include things like bird songs and calls. And typically when you go to look on the internet, for instance, and just search mnemonic devices, you might find a lot of different lists such as this one given out by the National Audubon Society. There are a lot of different ways in which people learn their bird songs and they can use different words or phrases or sounds or even I like to imagine different things going on when I hear birds calling. So some of the common ones are really easy ones such as birds that sing their name like blue Days, they simply go J J J, and that is all they really do for maybe 10 hours on end before the thing that's scaring them is going away. But there are some other ones that may or may not make sense, like the American goldfinch apparently sounds like it's saying potato chip, depending on what time of day or depending on the individual, you might have some variability there. But this is just going to be uh, definitely not an all exhaustive list, but these are just some of the common mnemonics that I use to try and remember the birds that I am hearing and trying to distinguish the ones that may sound similar to each other. We're gonna dive in and look at some of our thrushes a little bit and start with a common species that we might hear or see in either a city or a rural area, the American robin. Now, the American robin, as the Audubon Society, it's kind of like a cheery, cheery up, cheery, cheery up, cheery -o. So the American robin is just an overall happy little round red little bird, and it wants the whole world to know that it's there. However, the whole idea of the cheery up, cheery, cheery up, cheery -o can vary a little bit by the individual, like I said, but also we have two other sound alike species the rose-breasted grosbeak and the scarlet tanager. Now the American robin is, let's say, in the middle of the spectrum. They say cheery up, cheery, cheery up, cheerio, cheery up, cheery. But if you go on one side of the spectrum, you have the rose-breasted grosbeak, where the species sounds like it kind of has a voice kind of lesson, and it sounds a little more flute-like and methodical. So they'll have the cheery up, cheery, cheery up, cheery oh, but it'll be more high pitched. So the cheery up will be a lot higher and the cheery oh will sound a lot more crisp. Whereas on the other hand, you have your scarlet tanager that says cheery up, cheery, cheery up, cheery oh, but he sounds like he has a sore throat or he sounds really horsey. And if you were to look at a sonograph, which is a line graph indicating the different pitches of a certain bird call, it, it seems really raspy in a way. So the scarlet tanager will be on the more hoarse, raspy side of that spectrum. With that in mind, we go a little bit further into looking at our sparrows. We went from thrushes to sparrows. Sparrows are primarily going to be using more open field areas, whereas our thrushes, our grosbeaks, and our tanagers are going to be using more wooded areas, which is kind of a bother that they're all utilizing the same space and sounding the same. But our field sparrows, for instance, are very cute little brown birds, but a kind of distinct characteristic of them is they have a pink beak instead of a black one, common of our other sparrow species that we have in the United States. And this bird is it's mnemonic is a little weird because I don't think of it as a word or a phrase. I think of it as an action or something that you could see. For instance, I learned the field sparrow, like if you had a ping pong ball and you imagine the sound that a ping pong ball makes when it lands on a metal table. So starting from the top, they don't really bounce for very long. So the sound of the field sparrow goes, do you, 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 and, and the frequency of the, the, the chips that the field sparrow makes actually gets faster the further along in the song that it goes. But we also have another species that makes a more rattling call that is unfortunately in the same habitat as the field sparrows. We have our chipping sparrow. And as the name suggests, the chipping sparrow makes a much louder chipping sound. 
and the chipping is more of a rattle, dry rattle-ish sound, and it's very fast. So if you think of a bird that goes, that's the kind of sound that the chipping sparrow makes. Moving a little bit further along, we're going to look a little bit at our wren species. These guys are going to be utilizing both open and wooded areas, depending on which species of wren you're looking at. And we're going to look at both the house and Carolina wren because they are relatively common and they have the distinct wren shape with the really blunt long tail at the end. But these guys are a little more warbly in sound. The house wren kind of sounds like a uh, bubble of water with a mix of something like beatboxing, which is really interesting. But it's just another way of thinking about what does this bird sound like to help me remember what it sounds like in the field. So when I come across a bird, I can identify it as a house wren. But don't get it confused with the Carolina wren. Although they do look very similar, they have that distinct wren tail that's very blunt sitting up. And that's a, that's a distinguishing characteristic. When you see them perched, they will have their tail flipping up as a way of alerting other birds of something that could be a danger or other things like that. But the Carolina wren is going to sound a little bit more like it's saying Peter O, Peter O, Peter O, Peter O, Peter O, and it's going to say it really fast. But Peter O kind of also sounds like Wichity, which is the distinctive call of the common yellow throat. The common yellow throat calls a little bit slower than the house wren or the Carolina wren, rather but it's going to say something more along the lines of witchity, 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 witchity. And even though when you say the, mnemon the mnemonic or you're even hearing the mnemonic or reading it, it may not seem very distinctive, like how on earth could you distinguish the difference? But let's just listen to the two calls one after another. And this is kind of get, kind of going to get chaotic, but it will work and it will make sense to you in a second. But let's say we listen to the Carolina wren, and then we also listen to the common yellow throat. Notice that the Peter O's are a lot faster. There's a lot less of a break between the, the black, 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 essentially, and the witchity is going to be a little bit slower in cadence. Witchity, witchity, witchity. That's the distinct difference between those two species. Even though they're probably going to be utilized in the same way, you can distinguish those different calls in that way. Moving on a little bit to our buntings and other species such as that. Our indigo bunting is kind of common on its own. It's really nice that it has a repeat sequence of four different sounds, which my common mnemonic that I use is come, come, quick, quick, here, here, fire, fire. So the indigo bunting is very frantic and telling the whole world that they need to take care of their fire because the fire is going to spread, right? And the indigo bunting sometimes has a little bit of a variability. It might have four pairs of sounds. It might have three pairs of sounds. It really varies by the individual. And sometimes it just varies by how the bird is feeling at that time. Sometimes with black capped chickadees, they say as many Ds as they feel in danger, right? Chickadee, D, D. They're pretty calm. Chickadee, D, 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 D. It's very not so much angry, but alerting everything that is around. Now this I learned this week, it's really interesting. The yellow-throated vireo doesn't come around very often, which is a very pretty bird. And it is very distinctive by its color. It has a hooked bill. It has a really cool yellow eye ring in the midst of all of that rusty yellowish brownish color. And they kind of have a gray slate with some primary coverts and things like that. But really interestingly, comparing to the more common red-eyed vireo, the yellow-throated vireo and the red-eyed vireo say a conversation more so. They're saying, here I am, where are you? And they're waiting for the response of maybe another bird trying to establish territories and things like that. Or it's just another fun way of trying to conceptualize how they're sounding. But what we learned this week during our Wisconsin Master Naturalist training is the yellow-throated vireo says the same phrase as the red-eyed vireo, but it's a little bit slower in cadence. Take a listen. There's the here I am. Where are you? Here I am. Where are you? Now, let's look at the red-eyed vireo here. Mm 
Here I am. Where are you? Here I am. Where are you? Here I am. Where are you? All right. Now. Now, interestingly, we have the here I am, where are you? But for some reason, the yellow throated vireo is going to be a lot slower. And the red eyed vireo is probably going to have higher pitches with the here I am, where are you? Right. And that will be the main distinguishing characteristic. And when you get the chance to see them, you can clearly tell the difference between the two because the red eyed vireo has a red eye, as the name suggests. And it also has the black streak through its eye and a nice brown tufted cap. All right. With that, we have a small list of some birds that I really like that I've seen this week and the mnemonics that I use to keep track of them all. Happy birding. And if you have any other cool creative ideas or really nice mnemonics that help you, definitely feel free to share those. I would love to hear them. In the meantime, wait, what's that over there?